Morning, or evening, Grace, Brother, and Sis, Grace, have everybody back on with us here with the Word Awakening. As we continue our critique of Christopher Hitchens' book, God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. And we've been looking at here uh, 10 things that prove young earth creation. And we've looked at our first date, and today we'll look at our final two, verses 9 and 10. And in our ninth point here, we're going to look at there's very little salt in the sea. Very little salt in the sea. <clears throat> If the world's oceans have been around for three billion years, as evolutionists believe, they should be filled with vastly more salt than the oceans contain today. Every year, rivers, glaciers, underground seepage, and atmospheric and volcanic dust dump large amounts of salt into the oceans. <clears throat> Consider the influx of the predominant salt, sodium chloride. Some 458 million tons of sodium mixes into ocean water each year, but only about 122 million tons of that, 27%, is removed by other natural processes. If seawater originally contained no sodium, i.e. salt, and the sodium accumulated at today's rates, then today's ocean saltness would be reached in only 42 million years. Only about 1 70th of the 3 billion years evolutionists propose. But those assumptions fail to take into account the likelihood that God created a saltwater ocean for all the sea creatures that he made on day 5. Also, the year-long global flood must have dumped an unprecedented amount of salt into the ocean through erosion, sedimentation, and volcanism. So today's ocean saltness makes much better sense within the biblical time scale of about 6,000 years. Now, those people who believe in a 3 billion year old ocean say that past sodium inputs had to be less and outputs greater. However, even the most generous estimates can only stretch that accumulation time frame to 62 million years. These long agers also argue that huge amounts of sodium are removed during the formation of basalts at mid ocean ridges, but this even ignores the fact that the sodium returns to the ocean as sea floor basalts move away from the ridges. And now our tenth, tenth point here is DNA and ancient bacteria. In the year 2000, scientists claimed that they have resurrected bacteria named Lazarus bacteria that was discovered in a salt crystal conventionally dated at about 250 million years old. They were shocked that the bacteria's DNA was very similar to modern bacterial DNA. If the modern bacteria were the result of 250 million years of evolution, its DNA should be very different from the Lazarus bacteria based on the known mutation rates. In addition, the scientists were surprised to find that the DNA was still intact after the supposed 250 million years. DNA normally breaks down quickly, even in ideal conditions. Even evolutionists agree that DNA and bacterial spores, a dormant state, should not last more than a million years. See, their quandary is quite substantial. However, the discovery of Lazarus bacteria is not shocking or surprising when we base our expectations on the Bible accounts. For instance, Noah's flood that likely deposited the salt beds that were home to the bacteria. If the Lazarus bacteria are only about 4,350 years old, the approximate number of years that have passed since that worldwide flood in Noah's day, their DNA is more likely to be intact and similar to modern bacteria. Now, some scientists have dismissed the finding and believe that the Lazarus bacteria are contaminated from modern bacteria. But the scientists who discover the bacteria defend the rigorous procedures used to avoid con contamination. They claim that the old age is valid if the bacteria had longer generation times, different mutation rates, and or similar selection pressures compared to modern bacteria. But of course, this is just those rescuing devices. They're only conjectures to make their data fit the world view. And so that's what we have here today, and we'll be continuing in the book, starting something else next time we meet. So we look forward to that. Until then, until the break in the shadows, flee away. I am Dr. Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.